All right, so hi guys. It is time for Artmas Day 3, which is that Q&A video that I was talking about. So I actually didn't get as many com uh, commissions, bleh, comments on my community page than I thought I would. So I almost went to Instagram. There were a couple of comments I also did get, though, that I felt like they could be those their own videos. And so hence they were. So yeah, let's just get into it. So we're starting off with YouTube. Now, the first things first I have here are... Do, 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 get my little recorder out of the way. Please, recorder, get out of the way. I need to see my comments. Uh, da, 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 da. There we go. Uh, here's a good one to start off with. And it's like, how do you know when it's a good time to move out, move away from people who annoy you or hold you back? Um, the advice I would give is do it when you are financially safe to do so. I think it's really important that half the time when we live in toxic situations, it's usually not by choice um 99 of the time you know it usually isn't by choice it's by desperation you have nowhere else left to go um so i would say find a good backup plan talk with friends talk with other family talk with stuff like that try to see if you can get stuff out of there and then if you can't sucks but you're gonna have to you know have a nest egg and put money aside secretly to save up to get away from such situations I say this is a hard thing to answer because while my husband and I were trying to do it that way, uh, the toxic people we were living with ended up throwing us out over the phone with three days to try to find a new place to live with our wedding a week away. Or uh, not a week away. Our wedding was um, about a month out and uh, wasn't fun, wasn't nice, wasn't great. It was one of the most stressful, terrible times of my life. But I know we were planning for that sort of situation where we were like, all right, we're going to save some money aside. We're looking at apartments. We're doing things like that. And life just decided to yeet us in the face. And so that's why I'd say the safest opportunity is to do it that way. It's the same way. There's a lot of questions I got here, which were um, witch related, LGBT related, because if you don't know, yes, I'm a practicing witch. Yes, I am an open, proud bisexual. And, you know, I support the LGBTQ plus community and all that jazz. But um, the answer to many of those ones, which are like, oh, what do I do? If blah, 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 blah. If it is not safe, I am so sorry that I have to give you this advice. Don't do it. I know it sucks. I know you don't want that to be that way. But safety comes first. First and foremost. Okay. And you might think that your family is just like saying toxic things if you are in a toxic environment. I had a friend in high school who his dad would say a lot of toxic stuff, but he didn't think anything had happened of it. So when he came out of the closet, his dad beat him and had to go to the hospital for it. And I'm not, I'm not even exaggerating that. And that's not just me. It happened to so many people. I know so many people who have been kicked out because of their beliefs or the fact that they're LGBTQ or for the fact they were just different, uh, you know, they didn't agree with their family in toxic environments. So safety is the most important thing because I had a friend just this year who voting for Biden had them kicked out of their mom's house. Literally the only reason was they didn't vote for Trump and so their parents kicked him out. I'm not getting political here. I'm not talking about political beliefs. That's just like something legit that happened to a friend of mine that year. So when it comes to anything very serious like that or very negative or very against the grain, it is best, I hate saying it, it is best keep your mouth shut and wait for you to get out and get to a safe environment than taking that risk and hoping it'll work out because half the time it doesn't work out for people in a good way. And I do not want people being like, in danger. I know it's a dark way to start it off, but pff, uh, that <laughs> huh, it's one of the biggest questions I got, and I think it's really important to talk about. So let's see. Da, 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 da. Next question. Um, okay. I discovered your channel this year, and I came across the video where you're talking about being bisexual. I just wanted to ask, how did you realize that you were bi, and how could I figure it out too? Okay, so how I figured out I was bisexual was I, in my old video, um, I talked about feeling weird that I always had crushes on boys and girls. You know, I had like little cute kid crushes on like my teachers and stuff. And most of my teachers were girls. And, you know, there were a couple of guys and stuff like that. But I had never seen 
both. I had never seen it. It was always one or the other because I knew gay people existed as a kid. So it was like, all right, you were either gay or straight. That was kind of it. Now we've learned that no, there's a giant, there's a giant spectrum of it. And there's even a giant spectrum of genders and stuff like that. So that things change over time. But as for figuring out how I was bisexual, I finally came to terms with it when I was in high school and I had a girlfriend. It was a very short amount of time. We did not date that long. But I was like, all right, I'm going to figure this out because <laughs> I'm just confused. Because that's what the media always tells us. Because bisexuality and pansexuality just doesn't exist. <laughs> you're just either being, you know, uh, selfish because you can't pick or you're being conceited because you can't pick. And it's like, mm, that's not how that works. But that's how I thought it was. So I had my girlfriend, made out with my girlfriend, liked making out with my girlfriend. And then it was like, hmm, hmm. Nope, I still like guys. And I still like girls. Huh. And then I discovered that there was a word for it and it's just called bisexuality. And, you know, the, 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 I'm not here to have the, the bi-pan debate. You do you. But that is something that how, that's how I discovered it was I, I tested it finally. Also, I am in a long-term committed monogamous relationship. And so I had this girlfriend before I had my husband because I, we've been high school sweethearts. But I still have attraction to girls. I still get crushes on girls. My husband gets crushes on people. I think that's also something else you, could, you, should, you should be able to talk about with your partner. Because getting crushes on people is normal. But me and my husband are both very monogamous. Nothing wrong with poly or open relationships, but that's something you need to be able to talk about and be open about. Um, but yeah, the, the best way I'd say to do it is to test it. it uh, if you're confused or you're, you know, curious if it is a phase or something like that, because some people are just confused. It's not a phase, but some people do think. I had this friend who she was so sure that she was also bisexual and she had a lesbian experience. Uh, a lot more graphic than I did because I only made out with my girlfriend. And she was like, yeah, I realized, you know, I appreciate women. I think they're cute at the drop. I don't like being with women. And so sometimes that's a thing too. And that's also normal. Sometimes that just happens, you know? And so that's, that's, that's my advice for that. So I hope, I hope that helped for your, your question. Let's see. Next one is, are you into video games? If so, what kind of video games do you like? <laughs> am I into video games? I have video game tattoos, but am I into video? Yeah, I'm a, I'm a giant gamer. Um, I'm not like a Ooh, hardcore gamer, you know, oh, I got a platinum everything, but I have platinum a few games. I like playing games over and over again. My favorite kinds of games through and through. I love story games. Story games uh, hit me. All of my favorite games of all times, the stories are what get me. But I do have a couple of guilty pleasure games that I like just beating things. Um, I like hack and slashers too. Um, I like first person shooters. I'm actually not a big fan of like the Dragon Age, my, uh, I'll say Microsoft, no, Mass Effect games. Nothing on them. I've tried them. They're not my cup of tea. Uh, I And I know they're shooting and stuff in them too, but I just it's just not my cup of tea. But like, I, I like Data Boy. I'm, I'm recently, at the time of recording this, I'm playing Bloodborne for the first time, and I'm having a blast with that. Um, uh, another good one I really like are, I love Mario games. I'm also a big Nintendo, Nintendo fan. I love Legend of Zelda games. I love uh, Animal Crossing and uh, like the old Harvest Moon games or Story of the Seasons now. Um, I like horror games. Well, actually, I love horror games, but they're hard to find horror games. So yeah, I like a lot of games. Um, I'm really into IDV. I've been playing that nonstop or Identity 5. Um, I don't play a lot of mobile games. Like, I think the only mobile game, yeah, the only mobile game I play is Identity 5. But, um, I'm not a big fan of those, like, and again, this is just me, in my opinion. I'm not a big fan of those, like, um, like, I think they're funny, but the, like, uh, what are they? What are they? Digital novels? Because I'm okay with, like, dating sim and sim games, like, where you're reading it, but you're, you have choices. I'm not a big fan of the visual novels. It, that's just also me. I'd rather, at that point, read the book. I would rather not just play that. I'd rather read a book. But, yeah, that's me and my tastes. Um, I think games I don't like, though, I never really had fun with was, like, I never had fun with sports games. I never had fun with the Call of Duty games. 
I never had fun with like, uh, what is it? What is it? Like League of Legends and um, Overwatch. Tried them. Wasn't my cup of tea. Didn't like it. Um, same goes for like uh, Elder Scrolls Online and stuff. I love Skyrim. I've replayed that game a thousand times. But uh, I, I tried it. I have an account. I don't pay for it anymore. But I was just like, eh, not my thing. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm that kind of gamer, I guess. Uh, next question. Do you like jazz? Some jazz. I like the B emoji next to your question, though. I think that's pretty funny. But yeah, no, I think that's interesting. Uh, da -da -da -da. Another one was, uh, oh, uh, how did you discover your beliefs when it came to being a witch? Has it changed your life in any way since then? Mental wellness, health, new hobbies, etc. Uh, yeah, actually, it has. It has a lot. Um, I'm still, my craft is ever changing like many people's. I consider myself a kitchen witch. I also perform fire magic. I have only recently found a deity and my deity is Bast. Uh, that is a new discovery as in this year. And I am still very much learning and honing my craft. But uh, yeah, I would have to say uh, my mental health has gotten slightly better. Um, again, uh, while I do believe in witchcraft and I do believe in that stuff and I, you know, have, I do perform spells, I do things like that. I do know that, you know, magic does not stop brain chemistry. And so with that being said, you know, people should still get antidepressants. People should still take their anxiety meds. Don't think because you have a bunch of incense and you drink a bunch of tea that suddenly your anxiety is going to go away. But I have found changes in my own mental health and my well-being with it. And I really, really like it. And like I said, it is constantly changing and stuff like that. So I hope that's an okay answer for that. But yeah, um, as for new hobbies, um, herbology, like I'm learning all about herbs because I kind of have to for spells and stuff. So that's something really neat that I, I didn't think I would really be that into. Like I always like, was kind of interested in it, but I've been, I'm having a great time with that. And I do think that my uh, physical health is doing a lot better too, because I've been being more active in like searching and meditating and going out during the sun to like get some of that good vitamin D. Um, but yeah, yeah. Okay. There's the, I, I think I answered that one pretty well. Did I? Yeah. Okay. Let's see. Da, 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 da. Is that pretty much it for the YouTube ones that aren't like their own video? Yeah, they are. All right. Let's, uh, let's get into Instagram then. All righty. Also, yes, I do use my community page, guys. So you might want to check that out from time to time. I just, I know it's a heads up. I know community pages don't show up on like people who are on desktop, but it does show up on the mobile app and stuff. So just keep a lookout for those in the future next time. Um, all right, here's a, now we're on the Instagram ones. Have you ever made your own clothes or altered clothes? I have not made my own clothes. I have altered many of my clothes. I am a short, chonky woman. So I am 5'3 and very wide. So with that, yeah, I've had to tailor a lot of my clothes. <laughs> I gotta, I've had to patch up those thigh gaps. Um, I've had to hem pants constantly. I've had to, uh, you know, add patches and stuff to clothes and like sleeves, alterations. So most of that, I do want to make my own clothes someday. Obviously not to replace buying clothes because I don't have the time for that, but that it's definitely for me it's a space issue. I live in a one bedroom apartment and while my living room is really big, my living room is also my office. I have I have literally no room for like a sewing station right here. So, yeah, someday I'd like to work on making like outfits and cosplays and stuff like that. But for right now, basic alterations with my hand and a needle and thread is all I got right. <laughs> so, next question is do you like your current art style? What would you wish to improve? I do like my current art style. And what I would like to improve is feet. I hate drawing feet. I suck at drawing feet. I have references. I, I just need more practice. I hate feet. I, I genuinely hate feet. I, I miss doing full bodies. But when I get to the feet, everything just, just dies. And I, and I hate it. So yeah, I want to be able to draw decent feet and steps. And make it so that like for an artwork to look good, I don't have to have the character floating into the abyss. So the next question is actually from my husband because he follows me on Instagram and it's, why do you not like to put the toothbrush back in its holder? Because I don't. I think the cup is nasty, Cody, and I like keeping it by the sink instead. It's a weird thing that he hates and I hate. We will fight about the toothbrushes. And so what hair products do you use is the next question. And the hair products I use is I'm very basic. I use like Garnier Fertista or however it's said. I use the, the green bottle or the yellow bottle. And, um, 
sometimes if I can, I like Herbal Essences, the, the, the pink bottle, the rose one. Um, it varies depending on what I'm doing with my hair. Uh, but other than that, that's it. I just shampoo and condition my hair. I usually let it air dry unless it's cold, then I use a towel. But I almost never... I almost never uh, blow dry my hair or curl my hair unless I'm going out and doing something. Which, again, it's six spiky round boy, so I'm not. My undercut is... Uh, originally, I was going to have done it super cut because I didn't have a razor. But my neighbor comes over and helps shave my head for my undercut. So yeah, I'm pretty basic. And then I just have a very... Right now, in a time of recording this, I have a very basic just black box dye for my hair dye. So my hair products are very, very basic. <laughs> and very boring. So... Next question, how do you pick colors for your characters? Now, how I pick colors for my characters is I look up aesthetic mood boards and color palettes. I'm, I'm not even kidding here. If I have a character design done and I have the, like the colors of the character done, I look up what I look up what I think would look nice on that character and then I just go with that. So I'm pretty basic. I t because if I don't look up things for characters, I have a very bad habit of throwing all my characters in goth colors and goth clothes because that's I what I am. And I have to remind myself that no, my characters are not like that. I can't do that. That character wouldn't dress like that. So that's why I like looking up colors and stuff to make it match and make it look better. So that's all I got to say about that. Uh, next question is, is it okay to DM you fan art or do you prefer people to post it? I prefer people to post it because I don't always check my DMs. My DMs are often closed. I'm terrible at Instagram DMs, by the way. Please, if we're not friends, do not DM me on Instagram. I am terrible about getting back to those. I, I just am. I am very sorry. But yeah, I would rather people post it and tag me so I can see it than just like getting a random DM because again like I said because I don't check my DMs very often I feel bad when I see something got put in a folder because I don't follow them back and then it's like oh yeah that so and so sent you this like a month ago and I'm like great I feel like a jerk it's so much easier just tag me in it post about it show me it than just DMing me or emailing me about it so yeah but also on that fan art question yes I do like fan art if you want to draw me fan art I love it I appreciate it um, right now my toy house is also Twisted Disaster and I have my characters on there with their reference sheets and stuff like that. Some characters need to be updated, but yeah. So if you ever want to draw me fan art and you wonder who, just go to my toy house and pick someone and I, I would love it. I love getting fan art. That's not me asking for fan art, but I've had people ask and I am fine with people drawing fan art of my characters. I'm also fine with people drawing fan art of my characters with their characters too. I always think that's fun. So next question, do you like manga? Yeah, I do. Uh, I haven't really read anything big in a long time. I used to be really big into manga in high school. But right now, um, does Jinji Ito count? Because I bought Uzumaki for my birthday, and so I've been reading that. But other than that, I like rereading a lot of my classics that I like have nostalgia, like with nostalgia boners for. And it's like, I have like Chibi Vampire. I have um, a couple of the Hikarashi mangas. I have... I got the Witch's House mangas. That was great. That's not nostalgia. That's just a recent one I got. Um, I have a couple of the Vampire Kisses mangas back when that was a thing. And then... I think that's it because I sold a lot of my manga when I moved. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I like manga. Downside with that though is I need to get one of those manga apps because manga is expensive now. Back when I was in high school, it's like $5 for a book. Now it's like 12 to 15 for one. And you know, series can go up to like... 50 if not higher and so i need to just bite the bullet and get one of those apps so i can like pay to read it on my phone but yeah so that's that's it i, I mostly watch anime over reading manga it used to be the other way around but i also don't watch that much anime because i work a lot and uh if it doesn't have an english dub i have to like sit there and watch it and now there's anything wrong with that. It's just I would tend to do that more with like my husband. So the animes I am watching though, so people know, is I'm watching the Higurashi reboot. I'm watching My Hero Academia. I mean, my husband are just caught up on season four. Um, I watch Yashihime. Is that it? Right now? Yeah, right now that's kind of all I'm watching. So I'm pretty lame. Um, oh, well, Demon Slayer too. Demon Slayer counts, but uh, they haven't updated in a while. So, waiting for that. Well, I mean, the movie came out, but I can't watch it. <laughs> anyway, um, next question before I go on to more tangents. 
Uh, what are your favorite animals? I have many. Uh, my favorite animals come from... I have to say cats, and then right after that is chinchillas, because I have both for, like, pets. Uh, for fantasy animals, I like me a good lycanthrope. Lycanthropes are pretty great. I also love dragons and serpentines and wyverns. Um, do, 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 do. do you enjoy drawing magic circles? I do! I don't get to do them often, but I do. I love drawing, like, runes and magic circles and magic-y glowiness. Uh, I don't get to do it often, but I do love doing those. Um... Let's see. What inspired your art style that you have currently? Currently, it would have to be artists I follow. It would also have to be uh, like the classic like Simpsons, Matt Groening and stuff. That's why I do the four fingers in my artwork. Um, do, 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 do. A lot of my friends artwork, a lot of like Empress Kaiju, the Zodiac Lord, uh, Bezzy K, uh, the, 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 the brand function. I know there's more, but I can't seem to think of it right now. But yeah, it's mostly just picking and choosing stuff for my friends and my family and uh, things that I like seeing and aesthetics and squishiness. So I, th I, think, I think I have a good squishy soft style. Uh, the next question is, what inspires you? Oh, what inspired you to start making YouTube videos? Honestly, pretty boring answer. Uh, I wanted to hear people talk about topics that I really wanted to talk about and no one was talking about them. So I was like, all right, I'm just going to make it myself then. That was like that family of Futurama. Like, fine, I'll make my own casino with flapjacks and hookers. Except, you know, there's no flapjacks and hookers in my videos. But that's like kind of how it was. It's like, I'll just do it myself then. And so, yeah, pretty boring answer. But that's, that's where I am now. And, and I've just been making videos ever since. So sometimes it is hard. Sometimes I don't have much of a topic or a thing to think about. And so I tend to throw speed paint up if I can't think of anything else. But, uh... Yeah, when the when the inspiration hits, it hits. Now, next one is, would you ever play Minecraft? No, I've tried. I don't like it. My husband likes Minecraft. So someday when he gets a computer, maybe he'll stream it or something. But no, um, I would not play Minecraft. Nothing on people who like it. Again, tried it, didn't like it. So next question is, how do you get your lines to be so clean and sharp? Originally, it was stabilizer. But recently, this is actually a pretty good question. Recently, um... What ended up happening was uh, I've pretty much solely moved over to my iPad because I've been having so many issues with my tablet. And so, and I don't have the money right now to just get a new tablet. So with my iPad, what I've been doing is it forced me because the Pro, oh, excuse me, because Procreate doesn't have a stabilizer. It does and it doesn't. Discord, you need to stop. Uh, it does and it doesn't the way I'm used to. I had to finally bite the bullet and I had to learn how to have confident lines. And I used to think that was BS, but now I have very confident lines. Now I don't even need a stabilizer anymore. So I think that's just a key thing that it definitely just comes with practice is you need to have confidence in your lines and that's how you keep them so nice and clean. So next question, and you know what, I, th I think I'll end it here for right now. And I might, I might continue into a part two later on down art miss if I can't think of anything else. But the last one I'm going to end it on is when are you going to join the cult of Clip Studio Paint? I own Clip Studio Paint for my computer. And this is very, very blat blatantly a spite thing. I bought it for my computer when it was on sale. I own it. I have it. My friends have it. Um, and then when I got my iPad, I was super excited because I own it. And you can put it on multiple devices when you have that key. You can't do it for the iPad. No, you got to have a monthly payment if you have it on your iPad. And my spiteful ass was like, no, I already paid for it once. And screw that. I bought Procreate once and I own it and it's mine. And so because of that, <laughs> I don't have it on my iPad. So I just have it on my computer. And with my tablet being wonky, I don't want to practice on it with my tablet being wonky. Because I don't want to learn a program with dead spaces. Because there's a lot of dead spaces and dead spots in my current tablet. Which is why I've been mostly using stuff on my iPad. Um, and because of that, I'm able to practice with it. So it's one of those things that when I eventually get a new tablet, like for my computer, then I'll probably permanently move over to the cult of Clip Studio Paint. But as of right now, ain't gonna happen. <laughs> I do own it. I need to practice with it. But until I eventually get a tablet that, again, it isn't a necessity because I have my iPad so I can work on my work on my iPad, that's where I'm at. So thank you guys so much for your amazing questions. That helps me so, 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 so much. 
Let's get ready for more Artmas, and I hope you guys are having fun. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. If you can't think of anything, remember to comment just to feed the bot, because that helps so, 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 so much. I don't think you guys understand how much that's helped my, my algorithm recently. And all my other social medias are in my link tree link down below. Thank you, as always, to my Patreon patrons. Every little bit helps. I love you so, 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 so much. And as always, guys, I will. See you next time. Bye-bye.